Good Sunday, everyone. We are looking at September 27th today. Very high winds out there, red flag warning in place, and fire danger. So we're going to get all to that and explain what is actually happening outside today. So Sunday into your Monday, pretty much the last few days of September, we are looking at fire danger. Take a look at the map here. You can see all the way from Oregon's uh, borderline of California, all the way down to the Central Valley, the coastline, all the way into the Sierra. We do expect to see the red flag warning in place. Some high winds out there, the dry conditions, humidity is low as even single digits for some spots. And then we'll also see some much hotter temperatures. Instead of being in the mid 80s, we're talking mid to upper 90s. Could see some spots even with triple digits closer to the Redding area. So let's talk about this. We're also seeing a wind advisory in place. This is for areas of Redding all the way down to about Stockton. You can see that little area there in that tan zone. The wind advisory will be uh, in effect much longer Longer, further north. That's till Monday, 2 p.m. for Butte, Lass, and Plumas, Tama counties, and then the wind advisory for Calusa, Placer, Sutter, Yuba, and Sacramento counties uh, into the Stanislaus County area, Stockton. We do expect to see that in effect just until about 8 p.m. for your Sunday. The coastline, take a look at the orange. That is a heat advisory in place because, well, what we're looking at is temperatures about 10 degrees above average for the Bay Area, 10 to 15 even. And that's where we're seeing that heat advisory in place for that zone. We will see the winds around that zone also looking about 10 to 15 miles per hour. So let's talk about this is strong winds leading to strong wind gusts also. And that's gonna be from today until Monday, about 9 p.m. for the Valley. This is creating dangerous fire weather with downed trees and power lines. And of course, this is why it's so dangerous because we all know that the downed power lines uh, could cause the wildfires. That's why we're seeing about 15, uh, 16 counties early this morning without power. We do expect to see many more potentially without power later on today, depending on how strong the winds become, where they're looking at wind shifts and all of that playing a part of it. Now the power shutoffs again are also possible for some areas that aren't seeing it just yet. So please be ready to evacuate if a fire does break out and, and they do send text messages or alerts to your phone. Please heed the warnings and get out as soon as you can. Make sure now, even if you're in a zone that potentially could see a fire, that you already have your ready to go bag, everything you need inside that. Uh, there's a whole list of the six Ps also uh, on our website. All right, so the high pressure system, let's talk about this. This is the reason we're seeing everything we're seeing right now. We have a high pressure system following a pretty big low that gave us cooler temperatures last week. This high has continued to build for the last three days. And you see the ridge, that big rainbow there, that's been digging its way up north toward Canada and that's what's creating stronger high as well as these strong winds. The winds are going to be coming in out of the north just due to the fact of the rotation of that high, bringing in winds off the ocean from the north to the south. And that's what we're going to look at for the valley today. Now, the fact that it's bringing it from the north to the south, that means areas where we're seeing the North Complex Fire, the August Complex Fire, we could see potential smoke associated with those fires back into the valley. It's not going to be too hazardous, but we could see unhealthy for sensitive groups for some zones. Now, the winds will be anywhere from 15 to 20 miles per hour in the valley and see the flare ups there in yellow and orange. That could be about 25, 30 mile per hour winds. And we could see it as high as 35 mile per hour wind gusts in the valley through the coastal foothills and some of the coastal range, the area as well as the high Sierra. So about here and about right there could see some of those wind gusts as high as about 50 miles per hour. So these are really strong winds for today. And this is right around the lunchtime afternoon hours. In fact, things start to actually kind of slow down a bit as we start to move in overnight into Monday afternoon, evening. Look at this, 9 p.m., five mile per hour winds inland. That's beautiful. And we're gonna only see pretty much a 24 hour event. So this is actually the 9 p.m. time on Monday is when we start to see the red flag warning expire because everything starts to slow down. Okay, so let's talk about the largest wildfires in California history. Anything uh, look similar to you here? A lot of 2020s taking over. We have that one 2018. So in the last two years, all of the top five fires have been in the last two years. Can you take a look at that acreage there? The August complex fire making up over 850,000 acres. Man, these are huge. Largest wildfires though. Not to be uh, confused though with the most destructive. Only one of those, the North complex fire is also on the most destructive. That was this year, 2020. So you see just over 2,200 structures were taken from that. The campfire taking up 18,000 tubs, camp and tubs, 2017, 2018. So we have seen really the top of the top five, three of them within the last three years. So 
it is looking pretty grim. It seems as though every year we're just continually getting worse. We're seeing more fires. We continue to see drier conditions. Reminder, February, we saw the driest February on record since records were even kept in Sacramento. No rain, absolutely no rain in February. That's also leading to earlier starts to fire season. It's almost like we've had two fire seasons this year, one in the summer, and now we're getting back to the to the fall fire season, which is what we're typically used to. We usually see them right around the end of September through all of October and then partially November. It seems as the seasons continue to extend, so not a good sign here. Now, just a fire safety reminder for you that just when you see these days, anything with real strong winds, and we've already been dealing with the summer months and, and the dry conditions in the grass, try to avoid any equipment that creates sparks, whether you're pulling a trailer in tow. Is that chain too far on the ground? Maybe pull it up. It takes maybe five seconds to wrap it another time around. Don't mow your lawn on dry grass. It hits a, a rock there, creates a spark, not good. Avoid parking on dry grass and vegetation. A lot of people kind of think, oh, I'm gonna pull over to the side of the freeway here. Are you slowing down just enough that you can pull over safely? Try not to get into the grassy area. Properly dispose matches and cigarettes. That should be just without you know being told. You should probably know that. Um, I don't want to be your mother and tell you what to do and how to live your life, obviously. But you know, there's just quick safety reminder tips that can help you and everyone. Plus, if you start a fire, you could be uh, culpable and could have to pay a lot of fines associated with that. So just a reminder, all right, mid to upper 90s through the week, it's gonna be warm out there. Then we're looking at low 80s on Saturday, which will be finally nice to get back to, to those mid 80s to upper 80s for the rest of the following week. So very dry today, very windy today. Stay safe out there.